May I speak to you today in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' day, Jewish rabbis often spoke of the yoke of the law, God's law, given to them by Moses. We call that law the Ten Commandments. Over time, more and more laws were added to the Ten, to the point where it became more and more of a burden to keep all of the laws. I suspect that Jesus was thinking of those wondrous laws and lighted on another yoke, one he could bring to the people. He calls his yoke easy. By the way, in case you did not know, the word easy can be translated as well-fitted. Keep in mind, he was a carpenter before he was a ra wandering rabbi who regularly hinted that he was God's Messiah. In Palestine, ox yokes were made of wood. The oxen were brought to the carpenter and measurements were taken. The yoke was then roughed out and the oxen were brought back to try on the yoke. The yoke was carefully adjusted so that it could fit well and not chafe the necks of the oxen. The yoke was, so to speak, tailor-made to fit the pair of oxen so that the pair could work together easily. Balanced to utilize their strengths and minimize their weaknesses. In early church lore, there is a legend which says that Jesus made the best yokes in all of Galilee, and that from all over the country, people came to him to buy the best yokes that skill could make. The biblical commentator, William Barclay, says that in those days, shops and signs, just like they do today, had a sign above the door, and he suggests that perhaps the door of the carpenter shop in Nazareth may have well have been, my yokes fit well. I imagine that these two yokes were in Jesus's mind, the yoke of the law of Moses and the yoke from his carpenter shop when he spoke in this morning's gospel. Barclay also says that when Jesus made my yokes fit well, what he means is the life I give you is not a burden to cause you pain. Your task is made to measure fit you. Whatever God sends us is made to fit each of our needs and each of our abilities. Jesus in today's gospel is telling us, my burden is light. Barclay further says, it is not the burden is easy to carry, but it is laid on us in love. It is meant to be carried in love, and love makes even the heaviest of burdens light. When we remember the love of God, when we know that our burden is to love God and to love all people, then the burden becomes a song. There is a story which helps us understand the easy yoke and the light burden. A man came upon a tiny little boy carrying a still smaller boy who was lame upon his back. That's a heavy burden for you to carry, said the man. That's no burden, came the answer. That is my wee brother. Barclay says and suggests that the burden which is given in love and carried in love is always light.
please keep these two stories about yokes in mind as I lead us all through a very short meditation, which I hope will open the gospel passage a little more for each of us. First, imagine yourself as a disciple of John the Baptist. Remember back when you went out into the wilderness to hear his message? You find, found him crying out, the kingdom of God is drawing near. Repent and be saved. Soon, God's chosen one, the Messiah, will reveal himself so everyone must prepare. You readily accept John's invitation to be baptized, something that only converts to Judaism did to be purified before accepting the God of Israel's yoke. You fully immersed yourself in the waters of the River Jordan, even though the law did not require you to be so baptized. Then you and I became one of John's disciples. He became our rabbi, our teacher. You believed his teachings and waited breathlessly for the Messiah. And then you were dismayed and heartbroken when Herod the king imprisoned John. John sent for you so you could reach out to Jesus. And John's request is a question. Are you the one? Are you the one? Now imagine you, a disciple of John's, are in the presence of Jesus. Listen carefully as Jesus prays to God, whom he calls Father. He calls himself God's Son and thanks God for you and others, whom he has called infants and children of God. He thanks God that you come seeking the truth about who he is. And then an amazing thing happens. Jesus invites you to become one of his disciples, to learn from him and to yoke yourself to him as he reveals more about God and God's kingdom looking directly at you, he says to you, come to me, come to me, you who are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, and you will be filled and find rest for your soul. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. You are so drawn to Jesus that you say yes. You now become one of his disciples and learn much from him. He teaches you that everyone is a child of God and therefore beloved of God. He tells you that he has come to reveal the way, the truth, and the life. All one must do is yoke themselves to him, and he will partner with them to share life's burdens and to bring them eventually into life eternal. On his last day on earth, after he had been raised from the dead, he looks directly into your eyes and promises to be with you always. Although it may be very jarring, I ask you to come back and listen to me. Come back to the present and hear me say that we believe that some of John's disciples became disciples of Jesus. 
I hope that they carried with them the memory of that day when Jesus invited them to be yoked to him. I trust that they took that yoking seriously and found ease and comfort in being yoked to Jesus in prayer and ministry so that they were guided, supported, and sustained in his life and welcomed into the next. So you may be asking, what does this mean for, what does this mean for me? Am I being invited to be yoked to him and to be his disciple? To be partner to him in this life and in the next? I would say a resounding absolutely yes. If you have been baptized or are being moved to consider being baptized in his name, you have been personally invited by Jesus. Four Sundays a year, you are reminded of baptismal promises designed to help you remember your baptism, to keep you yoked to him in prayer, to learn from him, to recognize him as the one who can lighten your burdens and the one who can lead you into eternal life. On this Sunday, I also invite each of you to remember your baptism, to know that you have been sealed with this sign and he awaits you daily to seek his wisdom each of you are children of God. Everyone is. You are baptized into following Jesus' way of truth and life. Remember, each of you are his disciple. Regularly ask to learn from him in prayer. Seek to live by his new law of love to love God, to love your neighbor no matter what, and to love yourself as Jesus loves you. And remember to pray daily so that you can partner with him to do this very difficult ministry of love, which he will guide you towards each day until you are called to live with him eternally. I close with the hope that my words to you, which were guided by him, have fitted you well and given you what you need to hear this holy Sunday morning. I leave you with an icon of him, one which I chose to remind you of Jesus' invitation to come to him to take his yoke upon your shoulders. Let him direct your life. Find rest for your soul in him. Please spend a few moments with him. Look into his eyes and ask of him, not are you the one, but what do you want to say to me today, Lord Jesus? As you do so, I will be praying that each of you are taking his invitation to heart, to be yoked to him in this life and in the next, and to come to him, to Jesus, often in prayer so that his Holy Spirit will hear your thanksgivings and give you the wisdom and the will to love God, love your neighbor, but also love yourself, knowing that it is Jesus who wishes to be with you. Way, your truth, and your life. Amen.